Hi everyone, it's the Village Doctor here. So this is kind of a carried over from my last video talking about cue weight. In this video, I'm gonna talk about balance point. So the balance point of the cue is the point on the cue that is perfectly balanced. So mine is about right there. So you can balance it perfectly on a finger like that. Okay, that's the balance point. What that means is like half the, half the weight is distributed by distance on this side versus this side. So what that's gonna be important for is it's going to be very important for your follow through. So when you're doing your shot, the cue should go downward. The cue should naturally go downward in a downward direction. It should drop. Okay. So that's going to vary. The amount it drops is going to vary depending on where the balance point is on your shaft. So if your balance point is super far back, okay, really far back here, that means you have a lot of weight in the back half of your cue. Okay, when there's a lot of weight in the back half of your cue, a lot of weight back here, balance point shifted further back, back here, what's gonna happen is as you shoot, your cue is gonna go up, okay? Because there's so much weight in the back, as you go down, the weight wants to go down in the back, so it's going up like this, okay? So that's gonna make it a little bit difficult in that sense, but if you have more weight in the front, you have a ton of weight in the front, then what happens is as you go through, you just gonna wanna go down, okay? Because the weight in the front wants it to go down. Okay, what does all this mean? Why does this matter? Well, it turns out that this weight is gonna be really important for basically how your cue plays, whether it plays as like a heavy cue or a light cue, or also it's gonna be important on the amount of swerve and squirt that you get on the ball. So this is really interesting, but the amount of weight, so when you say, oh, I have a 19 ounce cue or oh, I have 18 ounce cue, a lot of that varies depending on where the weight is distributed, okay? If the weight is distributed towards the front of the cue, so you have a lot of weight in the front of the cue, your cue is gonna play like a heavier cue. So if I have a 19 ounce cue, but the weight is distributed in the front, my 19 ounce cue may play like a 21 ounce cue. It's gonna feel like a heavy cue, okay? Whereas if my weight is distributed in the back, right? Then it's gonna play like a lighter cue, okay? It's gonna play like a lighter cue because now all of a sudden there's not very much weight in the front, okay? So what happens is that all this, my, so in the last video I talked about how the, if you're, you have a lighter cue, you're gonna have softer touch on the cue ball, right? Softer touch mean you can just roll up really, really soft, very, very light touch, right? That's gonna be easier with a lighter cue. I also talked about in my last video, the science behind how a lighter cue allows you to have more spin, and that's more spin, so you have what's called a livelier cue. Whereas a heavier cue is gonna allow you to hit balls usually straighter, kind of cover up for those errors. So I recommend you watch the previous video for the details on that. But what I'm getting at is that the lighter the cue is at the front, okay, the lighter your cue is gonna act. The lighter your cue is gonna act like a light, it's gonna take on the characteristics of a light cue, right? So another thing to keep in mind is that when we talk about squirt and swerve, so this is pretty advanced up here. I have another video that talks about squirt and swerve, so I highly recommend you watch that. But if I'm having a video, if I'm looking at different types of uh, like squirt, for example, if I do right spin on this shot, okay, right spin, as I talked about earlier, when you do right spin, you hit the right side of the cue ball. When you hit the right side, because the cue ball is spherical, right, spherical object, we hit on the right side, there's a force vector going this way and a force vector pushing it this way because the ball is spherical. So because of that, when I shoot this ball, let's say I move this, if I shoot this ball like this, the cue ball is actually gonna track a little bit this way, a little bit this way, okay? So because of that, I have to compensate. So when I'm putting right spin, I have to actually aim further to the right, okay? See all that spin I generated? I have to aim further to the right, I have to compensate for that. It turns out, that the more you have to compensate, right, has to depend on a couple of factors. It has to depend on the shaft. Is it a low deflection? Is it, you know, a non-low deflection shaft? All these different factors, but a big factor it depends upon is the weight distribution of your cue. So if you have more weight at the tip of your cue, at the front of your cue, you actually have to compensate more than if you had less weight at the tip of your cue. So this means that when you're doing when you're doing your side spin shots, right? And I wanna do right spin. If my cue has a lot of weight in the front of the cue, if it's a heavier cue in the front, I actually have to aim further to the right. I have to compensate further, knowing the cue ball is gonna go more to the left when I use right spin, okay? Whereas if I had a lighter cue at the front, I don't have to compensate as much because it's gonna go more straight, 
Okay, so those are interesting things to keep in mind you're thinking of the balance point. Now, balance point is, some people say it's like the most important thing. It is one of the most important things. It's something that you, you, that you can get used to over time, but it's something you should really think about. Um, when you're adding weight to your queue, 99% of queues you buy will have adding weight in the back of the queue. When you're adding weight in the back of your queue, not only are you making the whole queue heavier, you are shifting that balance point drastically. You are moving the weight from the front of the queue to the back of the queue. Like I said, what does that mean? Move the weight to the back of the queue. Your queue is going to act like a lighter queue. You're going to be able to generate more spin. <clears throat> You're going to have softer touch, but it might be more difficult to just pot ball straight. Okay. What else does that mean? It means you're going to feel it. When you add weight in the back of your queue, your back arm is going to feel that weight directly. It's going to feel heavier, even though it's going to act lighter. You're going to get the effect of a lighter queue that's going to feel heavier. Um, last thing to keep in mind is that when you're adding weight in the back of the queue, you want to just be careful because during your follow through, you'll notice that as you do your follow through, your Q-tip will automatically come up a little bit because that weight distribution is saying weight in the back, it wants to go down to the front, wants to go up. Just keep that in mind that when you do your shots, that you make sure that every time you're doing that pendulum stroke and as you go through, your Q-tip should automatically go down, okay? So those are things to keep in mind. That being said, um, you know, a lot of people have different preferences. A lot of the players now are switching to these extensions on the back like I have here. This is an eight inch QR2 extension. Um, Shane has one, Earl Strickland, Efren Reyes, Jason Shaw, a lot of people are moving to this. That's gonna move the balance point backwards. So just keep that all in mind when thinking of your balance point. Um, like I said, a lot of it's personal preference, but if you're using a heavier cue and you add a lot of weight and you have an extension in the back, not only are you making it a heavier cue, you're really shifting that balance point really far back because of all the weight's being added in the back. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Sorry I talked so fast. I wanna get all this in a quick video. Um, like I said, this is one of those like really detailed sciencey videos, so I, I really hope it was helpful. Um, this is The Billiards Doctor. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.